So guys, been about a week since I posted a video. I have been working like crazy off camera, like an idiot, cause I'm bad about getting in a piece of equipment out here and just going to work. I'm horrible about setting up cameras, getting the GoPro set and all that stuff and getting footage. And I'm gonna try to do better, but I've really done a lot of stuff around here off camera. And uh, I'm kind of backlogged on some of the stuff that I've already filmed. I really need to get more organized with all this. Uh, but one video we're gonna do today, and it is from the title and the thumbnail, you already know what it is, it's a new piece of equipment. Just went to Bobcat uh, a week ago on Monday and picked up a mini excavator and it is right here. It is a 2022 Bobcat E42 R2 series. And here it is, after over a week of playing in the dirt here on the farm, I've done a lot of clearing, a lot of stumps have been dug, and uh, a lot of work has been done. And I think I've got only about 20 hours on the machine at this point, which is a lot for over, just over a week. Uh, but uh, yeah, more on this excavator. Right now we'll enjoy some clips of me going to Bobcat of Rock Hill picking it up, loading it up, and getting it home, and struggling to figure out the controls digging up the first stump. It is quite embarrassing.
like the extra lights and the handle for the ratchet trap all that stuff you said you had you know just let me know i'm pretty much free whenever to meet y'all whenever you need to be uh to meet up yeah that's fine i get a leave tomorrow okay that's fine just holler at me or text me and i'll do a ballpark time that works for you yeah man thank you all right bye Idle show them. In the mail. You're gonna meet me tomorrow with it. Yeah. The title for this plan. And he didn't have the title for it. And uh, he's been waiting on it to come in and finally showed up. So I'm gonna have to get him in there with me. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get him in there with me. 
we definitely need to grease these uh, chain binders because they got some rust in them. A little crusty. Same key works on every piece of equipment, just like, just like I got a cat key right now that starts basically any daggum caterpillar piece of equipment that doesn't have like a key code. Little, uh, have you seen where they got the side saddle toolboxes to go underneath it, down the side? That'd be nice to have on this one. This toolbox, yeah. Barely get two binders in here. Or it'll still shut.
Yeah, that's horrible. So guys, I'll try to put in some pictures I've got of some of the work I've done over the last week or so with this thing, some of the stumps I've dug, some of the things I've done with it. And uh, we'll do a quick look around at how uh, we're getting along with it. So first off, it does need a bath. It has gotten a little bit dirty, but it's not bad. Now, as I said before, this is a 22, a brand new E42 R2 series mini excavator. Now, options I've got on this, this is pretty loaded up, but I doesn't get the top tier. So we've got the enclosed cab, we've got air conditioning, we've got all the creature comforts you'd want, especially me being here in South Carolina and dealing with the temperatures in the summertime. Uh, I do have the hydraulic thumb on it. It does have the exchange system on it, the quick bucket change. And we do have the diverter valve here. So if I wanna put like a flail mower on it or uh, you know any kind of uh, tilt head or anything, I got my auxiliaries to hook into, change the diverter valve, it uh, locks out the thumb, and I can use whatever hydraulic attachment I've got. Uh, got it with a 24 inch toothed bucket. I'm looking at a 12 inch tooth bucket and possibly uh, one of the uh, rock grapple arms or a landscape rake or something like that. Also, and been talking with uh, Rut Manufacturing up in North Carolina about getting one of their 28 inch forestry mulching heads for this excavator because I still wanna use it here on the farm for uh, my forestry. I grow pine pulpwood. I don't know if I've mentioned that on the channel before. This farm was a working livestock and um, livestock farm did beef cattle when I was a child. And we did grow some agricultural products with the grain bin there. We did do corn and soybean. Uh, way back in the day, but after my father passed away when I was 17 years old, we got rid of the livestock and it, livestock, and it became inactive, so I switched over to forestry as a passive uh, means of farming and a way to keep my agricultural status. Uh, so that forestry mulcher will definitely help in thinning process, uh, getting the pine trees thinned out, and just, uh, you know, dealing with uh, all that comes with clear cutting and planning and all that with the forestry industry. So got the regular blade on here, did not opt for the angle blade, did not get a long reach or extendable stick on this. It is the standard length on that. Um, other options I could have gotten, uh, I think were a heated seat and automatic climate control. I've got the standard air, air conditioning, no heated seat. Don't really need that here where I live. And I think that's pretty much the only options, you know, that I didn't get. Everything else pretty much is topped out. Uh, looking at the machine, I believe it's right at 42 horsepower. 
right at 10,000 pounds. Uh, I've had to top up the coolant just a little bit uh, in the last, you know, in the first couple of hours of operation. Uh, this coupler here on the turbocharger keeps pushing back. I don't know if I got a weak clamp or what the deal is there, but I've had to push that back several times now. Might ask Bobcat about that. Uh, used a little bit of oil, just a hair down. Haven't had to put, you know, very much in it to keep it topped up, but uh, doing well otherwise. Need to pull out the air filter and check it. Uh, hydraulic fluid level, every time I've checked it, has been perfect. We're not losing any hydraulic fluid. One thing I can say right off the boat is this thing is extremely easy to work on. It's got lots of ease of access to all the major components. Hydraulic filter, one here. Case drain filters down here. The side panel quickly comes off. We got the dryer for the HVAC system. We've got the main hydraulic uh, control valve manifold here. Washer fluid jug, our battery, uh, fuses and relays, our PCM. So hydraulic fluid reservoir here. We got a radiator, radiator cap, our AC condenser. Uh, one quick thumb spin here and these pull apart where you can blow them out our exhaust luckily this machine does not have diesel exhaust fluid and does not have a particulate filter or have to do regions or at least that's what the dealership told me that looks like it might have some particulate catalyst in it but i'm not sure we got our diesel fill here on the outside easy to access oil fill up here turbocharger right here coolant res of course air filter everything is very well laid out easy to get at so I'm not seeing a fuel filter, so maybe that's the fuel filter. Although that's an exceedingly large fuel filter compared to the fuel filter on uh, my T590. But uh, see how hard it is to get this cover here off. Twist those out. And what we do, pick up. Oh, that was easy. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's gotta be the fuel filter because we got a little, uh, looks like water separator bowl on the bottom there. So quite a large fuel filter. I'm assuming maybe that's an auxiliary fuel filter or like a secondary fuel filter, or maybe that's a water separator, not exactly sure. But yeah, everything is very easy to get at for the most part. This side panel is a couple bolts here, a couple bolts here, and that comes off. So huge amount of accessibility to this machine. Really impressed by that. Also like the size of the cab uh i'm about six four and right at 200 pounds and uh i've got plenty of room inside of this cab plenty of headroom i probably got six eight inches there nice visibility all the way around controls Nicely laid out, got HVAC here, audio, auxiliary on and off for the thumb, uh, our lights, and we got the nice big seven inch touchscreen here. Throttle control back here, uh, ignition here. This is the glow plug, backup alarm. We've got an aux input, a USB here, regular uh, cigarette lighter power outlet there. AC vents, big cup holder back there. Big AC vent here, more down here on the legs. Pull down the bar, other joystick, exchange, wiper, squirter. Foot controls for our drive motors, hand controls for the drive motor, standard stuff, you know, for most mini excavators. Lots of foot room down here. Tons of room, tons of leg room. Really, really spacious again, 6'4". So uh, let's turn her on. Not gonna start it right now because I really don't need to run it. I don't think I'm gonna run it today. Maybe I will, I might want to. There's two uh, holly bush stumps in front of the brick house and uh, one in front of the master bedroom I've been wanting to dig out cause they keep growing back. Uh, so I might do that today. Let's go ahead and put the code in. And uh, let's look at the hour meter. Turn the radio off. 
Um, I think I said I was at 30 hours earlier and uh, gross exaggeration at 14.1. So as far as issues, I haven't had any issues other than the last time I jumped in this machine to go dig a stump, uh, I had an issue with a diagnostic code for the radio. I don't know if it's still in here. No, it didn't save the code, but the radio didn't work. I uh, turned the machine off, turned it back on, and the radio started working, but then Bluetooth connectivity wasn't uh, working. Small issue. I don't care if my radio uh, bugs out every once in a while, as long as I don't have an issue with the hydraulics or, you know, the function of the excavator. So another cool thing, both windows, huge opening here. Front, back, this side. The door pins all the way back. And then, of course, per usual, the whole windshield just flips right up there. So all this wide open, wide open, and uh, wide open here if, uh, you know, you want to enjoy the breeze in the springtime, but not me. <laughs> My allergies have been killing me this year. Uh, so I'm going to protect myself from the outdoors and the pollen and enjoy some cool recirculated air conditioned air when I'm running this thing. Cause uh, yeah, the pollen's been killing me guys. That and any kind of dirt dust just has me sneezing my head off. So yeah, that's a quick rundown and uh, show of the new E42. Uh, there's gonna be plenty of videos of me operating it in the future. Just need to get my GoPros charged up, get some mounts up in here, and uh, actually remember to start filming before I start, uh, you know, working on stuff. I just get so gung ho and I want to jump in the machine and start going. I don't want to start filming. But yeah, there you go. There's the introduction to my new E42 Bobcat. Loving it so far. No real issues to talk about. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one.